and JP's our youngest, and he's magnificent. And uh, we've, we're very fortunate. We've got four great kids, but I love JP because he's kind of special and unique. JP is our youngest, and it's difficult for him to communicate in language because he has Down syndrome. And so for me, it's so easy for me to talk. I, I don't know his struggles that he goes with. But he makes me laugh, and he's just a wonderful spirit. He's a great gift. I just want to tell you one quick story about JP that makes me laugh about JP. The other day, we're teaching him how to put his shoes on. He's 10 years old. Teach him how to put his shoes on and tie his shoes. And he's having some struggles with that. And the other day, and I will finish with this story, the other day, we had him in the car. And I said, JP, I look back. He's got his shoes on the wrong feet. And so I said to him, I said, JP, your shoes are on the wrong feet. He looks down at his shoes. He kind of processes. He thinks about it for a moment. We come to a stoplight. He taps me on the shoulder. I turn my head around in the van. I look back at his feet. He says to me, with absolute sincerity and honesty, he says, only feet I have. Ellis, <laughs> listen to How to Build High Self-Esteem for 10 minutes every night before he goes to bed. So one day, about three weeks later, we had a crisis occur in the house, and the crisis is this. The bathtub filled up. We've got one kid clean, three to go, and it will not drain. Now my wife yells in from the other room. She goes, hey, stud muffin. <laughs> Ladies, help me out here. Will you just all yell stud muffin? Because I've always wanted that to happen. OK, ready on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Stud oh, I love that. Thank you. I just give you all a hug right now. So anyway, she yells out, she goes, hey, stud muffin. And you know that's not true. You know that's not true. I'm making it up. But actually, she yelled out, honey. And she goes, the bathtub's filled up. It won't undrain, and it's clogged up and all that. And can we do anything about it? So I, I walk in there. I looked at it. Now, our daughter had taken a bath. Our boys weren't clean yet. We got to go to a wedding tomorrow. So I, I said, why not just have the boys take a bath in their sister's bath water? My sons were not excited about that. I went to them, hey, boys, what do you think? They go, yeah! So then I go downstairs to unclog the drain. I can see the pipe coming down from the bathtub over here, going over here, and there's a big pipe over here. I know this one works. I don't know anything about plumbing as well as know about anything about making decks, right? I know nothing about any of those things. So it is a plastic pipe. I have no idea what possessed me, but I, oh, I just reach up, and I start to unscrew the pipe. My yell wife yells from upstairs. She goes, it's draining. I mean, it's spraying out. I'm getting drenched. I'm wet. I'm soaked. I'm mad. I'm angry. I yell upstairs. Hey, Teddy, give me some towels. What do you need towels for? I'm all wet. How'd you get wet? I unscrewed the pipe. That was stupid. <laughs> I'm wet. I'm angry. Ellie's been listening to How to Build High Self Esteem for three weeks. He's been listening to How to Build High Self Esteem for three weeks. So he comes, he comes stomping down the stairs. Help me out here right now. He comes stomping down the stairs right now here on the table. He comes stomping down the stairs. He opens up the garage door. He's looking at me. I'm wet. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm going, dah, 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 get upstairs. He does not leave. He's been listening to How to Build High Self Esteem for three weeks. I say, oh, yeah, get upstairs. He gets this big smile on his face. He's going to use some of the information he's learned. And they love this moment, don't they? They love this moment. I say, yeah, yeah, get upstairs. He goes, Dad, you can be wet and happy. <laughs> you can be wet and sad. It's your choice. <laughs> Folks, come over here. Now, and where we got? All right, Steve's with Horizon. Steve, come right over here. I'm going to have you slide over just a second there, Jack. Stay right here, Steve. Every credit union, I believe, should have a credit union cheer. So I went up to Steve and I said, Steve, do you have a cheer at your credit union? He said, no. And I said, today, you're going to get a credit union cheer. So this is how the credit union cheer works. And you want to write this down on your handouts. And that is leadership. Sitting on a plane from Kansas City, where I live, to Las Vegas here. And while I was on the plane, I was taking the data, I was playing with it with Excel, and I was doing all those kinds of things. And while I was on the plane, a woman sitting next to me was watching me with the data. And I'm just sorting your financial data out and putting it all together, who's the best in this, who's the best in that. And I was looking at all the data. And the woman sat next to me watched me for about two hours, 
we got to the point where he had to land. And so as we were landing, I had put the computer away and she goes, what were you working on? And I said, well, I was working on the top 100 in growth. Who was growing the fastest? She goes, wow, do you enjoy that? And I said, I do. I love sharing that information with other folks. And she says, uh, can I make a suggestion? And I said, sure. She said, why don't you get a life? <laughs> <laughs> so this, I'm gonna, I want to tell a story about service selling. Chris is going to be me. I'm going to be my wife. And ladies, I'm in... <laughs> this is my show. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You told me to do that. <laughs> but anyway, Chris is going to be me. I'm going to be my wife. Now, ladies, I am so incredibly jealous of your persuasive skills. You have great persuasive skills. So you're going to be in the kitchen making a sandwich because my wife wants a new deck. Okay, so she, you're in the kitchen making a sandwich, and I, and my wife sees me making the sandwich. I'm my wife. He's me. So my wife comes in and she's gonna use her persuasive skills. She comes in, she comes in, and she sees me making the sandwich, and she comes up just like this. <laughs> yeah, you can continue on. You know what, and I love Chris, I love Chris, because here a few weeks ago I had a guy rub back. <laughs> but who's the best boss you ever had? And he illustrates the point about the four M's. He says, the best boss I ever had was Ewing Kaufman. And I said, why? And he says, Ewing Kaufman was so good at firing up a group. He gave great presentations and he could fire us up. And so he had a presentation one day where he had all the sales team, all the sales team at, the con at a conference at a hotel. And he said, you know, we've got to go out and beat last year's goals. We've got to really get after it. And he had them all fired up. They could just run through walls for Ewing Kaufman. And they were all fired up. And he says, right now, reach in your pocket and get your business card out. And he says, in that business card, what I want you to do is I want you to write down on that business card how much you're going to beat your quota by. So he said they were so fired up. People just wrote incredible numbers, just incredible numbers. And he said, oh, they were fired up. And some people put the wallets, you know, put the cards back in their wallet. Some people put it in their pocket. Then they all started to walk out. But Ewing Kaufman beat him to the back door. And while he was there, he held his hand out. Give me that card. Exactly right. Give me that card. He collected all the cards. What do you think he did? Every month, he monitored their sales. I said, what was the result? He said, the results were pretty simple. He challenged me to be the best I'd ever been in my entire life. I had the most sales that year I'd ever had. And for the company, we had the most sales ever. See the power of leadership? See, best bosses are not people who, co who coddle folks. Best bosses are people who challenge them, who mentor them, who make them more than they felt they could be. That's the power of the stories I heard over and over and over again from people. And I love that, the four M's. You gotta measure it, you gotta monitor it, order to manage it. If you don't measure it, you don't monitor it, you can't manage it. And the last mantra is, we want to grow. We want to grow. So now I wanna give you a couple of also questions that you wanna add to your application for those bad borrowers for those bad borrowers. You're gonna put this application, this question on your application. If we give you this car loan and you default on the loan, where do you plan to hide the car? <laughs> There's a woman back here going, yeah, that's right, you go get them. And here's the other corollary to that. If they answer the question, do not give them the loan. <laughs> so Michael's going to be me, and I'm going to be, and I'm going to be my wife, and I'm in the kitchen making a sandwich. So just make a sandwich. And my wife wanted a new car. My wife wanted a new car. So when she wanted the new car, I was making a sandwich in the kitchen, and she was going to use the feminine persuasive skills. And ladies, I'm incredibly jealous of your ability to do this. Okay, so. She wants the new car, I'm making the sandwich, and she comes into the kitchen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Now here, hold on, hold on. A couple of weeks ago, I did this thing, and a guy actually rubbed back. <laughs> <laughs> 